right, all right, all right. I've never painted my dog before and everyone is keep asking me about it. So here I am. I'm painting this cutie pie. He's a rescue dog. It's a Pomeranian mix, a black palm. And he's the cutest, sweetest, most well-behaved dog we had so far. We used to rescue dogs uh, and foster them, keep them until they would find a forever home so they would get used to a home environment. And I always end up having the most problematic dogs because my heart would just <laughs> guide me there. Dogs nobody wanted. Dogs with, we had dogs with cancer, dogs um, with behavioral issues, traumatized, abused. I even had a death dog once. And um, elderly dogs we fostered. Dogs would not want to eat. They were just skin and bones. And they all got adopted and then we saw this one and uh, at an adoption event and my youngest daughter Vivian said mom I think this is our dog so we went next day and adopted him we didn't know anything about him and it feels that, in a way, this is my payback for helping all those dogs because this dog is the most sweet, well-mannered dog you could imagine. Like we got the perfect dog. Isn't that cell Tokyo? You wanna say hi to everyone? Let's see if you can say hello. Hello everyone. I'm Tokyo. <laughs> hi! <laughs> it's always by my side, no matter where I go. We wanted to call him Art first <laughs> because he's always there with me and I always paint. But then um, we love that movie Big Hero 6. It's an animation movie I saw with my daughter. And uh, although uh, the movie happens in this imaginary city called San Fran Tokyo, which is a combination between <laughs> San Francisco and Tokyo, I guess. And we wanted to call him San Fran Tokyo. But that ended up being too long of a name to call. So he ended up being Tokyo. You know, it, when you paint a subject like Tokyo that's all black, you know, um, you have to find ways to bring in some color somehow, otherwise it will look so boring. So I am introducing all kind of colors like reflections. have pinks and ochre, yellow ochre and 
all type of blues in that. This is neutral tint, it's a very dark grey. I don't use black at all. Whenever you mix the dark colors you have on your palette, you will get a close to black shade, so you don't need to really, and I feel like black always looks very dead it's a dead color that just sucks up all the all the energy all it looks so flat and I'm, I'm staying away as much as I can from using it. So I made a post the other day about how unimportant it is to ask what colors do you use or what brands of brushes I, I don't even know to be honest someone asks me what brush do you use I, I don't even know I pay so little attention to this I would never know to answer you this is my brush today the, um, when I buy, buy brushes what I'm looking for is a brush that's thick enough so you can hold enough water and one that makes a really sharp point this is the only things I'm interested in I do not care about the brand or the material that's made of I know the theory behind it with a squirrel that absorbs more water and all the things but I don't really care in no way whatever makes a mark <laughs> and I do need something to make a sharp tip Sometimes I turn my back around and just scratch with my, my brush around and just scratch with it. It, it, it doesn't matter really. <laughs> So if you're not going to see me answering those kind of questions, it's really because I don't know, I would have to look back on my video and try to identify the brush and I really think it's so little of importance that I'm not even going to go through the trouble of finding out what brush I used or else in terms of colors paints I do use a uh, professional grade paint because uh, I sell a lot of my work and it's a archival quality that means will not fade in time but again I have no one brand that I use and I try things all the time different brands whatever it's on sale most of the time I 
paint a lot. I use a lot of art supplies. A lot, a lot, a lot of art supplies. So, you know, finding deals on it, it's definitely important to me. You know, I usually, whenever I purchase art supplies, I probably end up paying around a thousand dollars for for the trip for the shopping spree I purchased them all at once I don't have to keep going back and forth I'm trying to get as much as I can for that amount most important thing is in painting especially if you paint figuratively you know you want to resemble something a subject um, it's the most important thing is matching the value that means how light or how dark something is or you can call it tone that really is the most important thing. There's, there's nothing else. There's nothing else. And all the other questions are just way too. If you if you if you don't understand values and you don't know to um, match them properly, then that's what you need to work on. There's nothing else more important than that. It's it's a waste of time to go take color theory classes when you don't understand value and tones so I do not care at all about the colors that I use all I care is about the value so I scan all my colors like when I look at them I just like looking it's like converting them in with a tonal filter on your iPhone or tablet and then looking at them in, in grayscale. This is how I look at my color. I don't look to see what color it is. I just look to see what value it is. And then so you can use any colors you want. Any colors you please. Just match the value of your subject or reference photo or whatever you're working from. I could not even tell you what colors I use because I, I you know, I dip my brush in a bunch of colors. It creates a new shade that's not straight out of a tube. How could I possibly even tell you what it was? I don't even know. Nobody knows. So that's why I'm trying to convince my students to give up these questions and just really focus on having a good drawing to start with a good drawing is the basis of all great paintings you cannot really go around that unless you make some non-figurative or conceptual or whatever art which is a different animal I'm not talking about that right now
maybe the most next most important thing to me is creating mood and atmosphere in my paintings having a emotional um, an emotional painting you know don't be so much in your head about theory and formulas and just really put in your I don't know if I should call it state of mind or maybe state of being a state of being would be more appropriate than state of mind because mind is mostly about thoughts and I'm talking more about your state of being, let that manifest into your painting. You know, if you're angry, use that. If you're sad, use that. If you're happy, use that. Or if the subject, if your subject invokes some sort of a feeling or mood go for that And I also like to paint fast. As you see, I don't like to layer and I like to go from the first scope with my darkest value, finish it fast. There's a type of energy that goes into that that I think is very attractive. So if, if you're watching this, I would so love if you would write a comment about where are you watching it from, what city. I love to see how far my videos are reaching. And if you may, share it so we'll spread this love for painting. doing this purely for the joy and enjoyment of painting. For the uh, deliciousness of being a creative being. There's nothing compares to that for me. I I've been paying attention to my body, how it feels, while it creates. It's just so cool. My mouth, my mouth waters. <laughs> like I salivate more when I paint. I just love it. I'm having a visceral sensation. It's so, so delicious. It's amazing. I wish more people would, you know, take on painting. You see, you get out of your own head with your thoughts and your worries and your problems, and you just release this. It's just paint and paper. A 
and then watercolor it's so uncontrollable you can really control it you have to go with it and dance with it see what it does and have a response to what happens there instead of trying really hard to control it I'm teaching a class at 7 o'clock. Takes me 15 minutes to get there. I must go soon. Hopefully, I can finish this. He has a heart. Um, medallion with his name. That's what I'm painting there. So cute! <laughs> That's him running. Did you hear that? I could put him in my bag and go with him anywhere. Like people think he's a toy. He would be so quiet, would not bark. I can go with him at Starbucks. Or shopping and put him in my bag and just have his head come out and people will think it's a toy it just says it's quiet and enjoys going anywhere So I think that's about it for today. Thank you for watching. I have to go teach my class. We're gonna paint a white rhino today. They're extinct. Extinct. They're only, I think, two left in the world. And they had to surgically remove the horn so he won't be hunted. It's just terrible what's going on so I thought I would honor that through a painting of the white rhino and that's in my class today I teach at Sproul Center for the Arts is the oldest center in Atlanta area for over 40 years I love being there teaching there And if you live in the area, maybe you will take a class there too. Alright. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Have a great night.